Hello, I'm Sip Mendez. Welcome to Sips Wood Chips. And um, this week, I um, accomplished a goal. I uh, have now have more than 5,000 subscribers. I started making these YouTube uh, videos back in July 2013. And uh, so I'm coming up on my second year anniversary, and I now have more than 5,000 subscribers. I want to thank everybody for watching. And I also want to tell you how much I appreciate all of your comments. It's the comments that really um, make it worthwhile. Uh, for this week's project, I want to show you how I made the, the handle for this uh, uh, bowl gouge. This is a 5 8 Thompson bowl gouge. And I purchased uh, the tip uh, from one of, actually from the estate of one of the turners in the uh, wood turning club. And uh, I made this handle from a, a table leg. This is the table leg, and it's maple. And so that became this handle here. I made it rather heavy here at the top around the, the shank of the tool, and then tapered it down to something that's very comfortable. So um, keep watching, I'll show you how I made this. Remember, before you start any project, make sure you read, understand, and follow all the instructions that come with your power tools and equipment. <clears throat> Woodworking is fun, but it's also important to work safely. Here is what I have to work with. This is the tip that I'm going to use, and I believe it's a Thompson tool. This one is a little bit larger than 5 eighths of an inch, with 5 eighths of an inch is about 16 millimeters. And this end is turned down just slightly then uh, for a handle, I was over at a rummage sale and I found, uh, well it's a thrift shop, rummage shop I guess, and um, I found two of these legs at five dollars each and they seem to be made of um, maple, so that, that'll work out pretty good. I do have one other Thompson tool, this one here, and that, that was a given to me, I wanted sort of at a uh, at the Christmas party and there were several tools given away and this is what's considered a uh, 3 8 detail gouge. For ferrules I'm going to use one of these. I've got a couple of them. These are um, uh, I think they're I thought they were one inch but inside measurement here is one and an eighth or 28 millimeters and about one inch long which is about 25 millimeters and that should make a, 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 a nice ferrule. Have my face shield on. Three quarter shallow gouge. Check my tension and I'm going to kick that up to 850. That looks pretty good. And I'm just going to rough shape it. There's not a whole lot of reason to do anything else. Like always, <laughs> remove my ring. So here, there's my ferrule, and I usually cut maybe a, an extra quarter inch, and then I'll trim that off when I'm finally done. <clears throat> right now, this is much too heavy. 
Most of my other uh, large chisels, here's some of my other bowl gouges. They're quite a bit lighter. I'm going to try to make it only a little bit heavier than this. So here's the ferrule, and then I need my calipers. Okay. And these are an inch and an eighth. But I'm just going to um, eyeball it. I'm actually going to make it larger. This is actually narrower than it should be, but that's okay because I'm actually working over here. So, it'll be about there. I'm going to use this handle for a, for a guide. And so I want the heaviest part to be right around in here. I want the lightest or thinnest part here, and yes, this is going to be about where the end is going to be. So let me mark this with the uh, parting tool. And let me skim this off too. And it's still spinning at 850. Yeah, I'll take it up to a thousand. <clears throat> Check my tension. So here's where the end is going to be. My handle similar to this one. This is the end. It's going to be tapering down here. And it's going to be smaller here than on the end. Let's see what I can do. So this is all freehand, freestyle, totally unrehearsed. So this I'm going to take down close to the, the measurement I made there. And I'm going to 
try to take the download button here. And again, this will be the highest spin. So I marked the line here, and this is about the diameter I want. <clears throat> so I'm going to take the, this part down just a little bit more. And this, I'm going to taper it down a little bit so it's not so bulky. So now this part here, I'm going to increase the, the angle at which it tapers. I'm going to this down here safely. Okay. And that will give me plenty of support on the shank to the, the tip. I'm going to thin this down some. Make it look more like a bowling pin. <laughs> getting some chatter in it, so you might notice some some um, repeating pattern. It looks almost like spiral cuts. Okay. I'm going to sand this offline for just a minute and see what it looks like. So now, I need to remove this, and I can slide my um, ferrule over it. 
and it looks like the correct diameter is about the thickness of this tenon here. So that means I need to reduce this down. And I'm going to burnish a little groove on there. And that will tell me the exact diameter I need. So I need to remove all of that tenon. And I have a curved uh, skew. Let's see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and sand this slightly. I think that's about all I need. Just fine. Okay. The other thing I want to do before I'm really finished is cut some grooves into it, some decorative grooves. And maybe I'll do uh, two, one, or two. Okay. I'm just going to use a, a skew. And then I'll burn them. I'm going to try to burn these grooves in, and I have a piece of wire with a couple little blocks to hold. Hey, that worked. Very good. I think what works best is to get it on here and get it in the groove and then slowly wrap more wire around it. And that gets it hot enough to burn the color in there. That looks good. To cut these off. I can cut this deeper and then cut it off with the little saw.
my handle. Looks pretty good to me. And I've been mixing this for about a minute. And I'll spread that out here. I don't have to put much epoxy against this edge, it's going to, the fryer will draw enough epoxy in there. I'll just wipe this a little bit. Stick better. Okay, I think this is the better edge, so leave that up. Okay. Set that in there like that. Take my other ferrule and use it. And while it's still wet, I can now spray a little alcohol on it to remove that excess film of epoxy. While it's wet, alcohol dissolves epoxy. So we'll let that set for at least five or ten minutes. I have my chuck mounted in my in my lathe. It's spinning at 500 RPM. I made a small mark on the end of my handle and a uh, pilot hole also on um, the uh, this end. So I'm going to start it up and it should spin freely and then I can uh, use the ram to go into the and drill the hole. All I need to do is hold the handle so it doesn't catch. See if I can just pull it out. There. Very good. There it goes. That looks pretty well centered. And it looks like it's a little loose, but that means I have to epoxy it in there. And I've got my epoxy mixed. So I'm going to rub that up back and forth on the the shank here. If I get all of it to have at least a little bit on there, including the end. Okay. And I may have to actually clamp this in place somehow. Looks pretty good. And I'll keep a little pressure on it until um, all the epoxy either comes up or goes further down into the grain. Okay, so here's the tip. This is before, and you can see that it's got quite a few facets to it. I've got it on my uh, one-way Wolverine jig and I'll sharpen that. So here's my um, tip. You can tell there's a little bit of a facet there, but I'm not going to worry about that for now. 
I don't want to remove more metal than I need to. I think it looks a lot better now. Also took some uh, wet dry sandpaper and cleaned the inside. And uh, that looks good to me. I'll give it a try and see how it does. Well, I hope you enjoyed watching the video. And here's my bowl gouge all finished. I've given it several coats of uh, polyurethane and also some beeswax uh, finish to, to polish it make it feel smooth. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching. I always appreciate your comments. And until next time, take care.